Every once in a while, I start an old versus new in alt mode instead of robot mode, for usually one of two reasons. Number one would be the transformation is too complex for me to really want to show the robot to vehicle mode version, or in this instance, the differences between the robot modes are so drastic that you just have to wait a little bit to see it. You just gotta wait a little bit. Because this, my friends, is the old versus new comparison between the 2012 Fall of Cybertron Sideswipe and the brand new, pretty much, it was, like, leaked and, like, not even revealed until, like, a week ago. And I actually found this at Target right before the official, like, unveiling it. What was it, WonderCon? Something like that. But yeah, this this guy like just came out out of the blue. It is the 2024 Studio Series Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Sideswipe. So I wasn't really <clears throat> stressing to have a Sideswipe in the new Studio Series line. Because this one is, I don't know, kind of have a soft spot for it. But I am blown away with the quality of the new one. I absolutely love it, and I pretty much only have one thing that I really can give the old one still. It's pretty much just one thing, and you can pretty much see it right away. I think the one thing that I like more on the old one is the incorporation of both silver and white into the vehicle. I just, I like that color combo. Seeing the silver and the white just looks really nice. I just like that. But the all-silver also looks very nice, so I'm not really going to complain too much. So yeah, the original Fall of Cybertron one then. Let's take a look at this vehicle mode. It's pretty decent. Uh, it has like nice painting on the wheels. Uh, it has like some nice, you know, detailing on the windows right there. Again, I love the silver and the white integration. The little venting back there is nicely painted. Uh, it's a pretty decent vehicle mode. Uh, unfortunately, you can just see the hands and the feet poking out of the back. They just gave zero effort into concealing any of this. And honestly, that's a pretty reoccurring theme for a lot of, like, War and Fall of Cybertron toys. They kind of just give up around the back. But this one is pretty notorious for giving up around the back because the hands are just right there. The hands are just right there. Uh, th this one's not too bad. I, I kind of like the vehicle mode. I think it's pretty nice. And uh, it did come with an accessory. And it is ludicrously large. And I keep fumbling them as soon as I bring them out and dropping them on the floor. Uh, yeah, look at this thing. It's huge. It has, like, this massive, like, you know, barrel thing. Like, this massive drum and, like, this... It is kind of cool how, like, the actual barrel can... Uh, you know, move in and out in the car. I do like that. But this gun is so huge and enormous. I actually don't display it with this figure at all. It's so big, I give it to my Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Optimus. Because it's like the closest approximation we can really get to just a big old gun. And I like the little red highlights. It looks kind of cool with Optimus. So yeah, stupidly huge gun. Uh, but it's kind of cool. It's cooler to give it to bigger characters. Uh, yeah, vehicle mode's not too bad, honestly. It doesn't really roll too well, though, because this was actually the era of Transformers where the budget took a massive hit. Uh, right at 2012, with the Fall of Cybertron line, the budget for deluxe classes plummeted. And the Fall of Cybertron line is pretty notorious for being pretty cheap and low quality. And we will see. We will see with this guy. We'll, we'll see... This is the best version of this mold, by the way. Did I mention that? This is the better of the two. Anyways, let's look at the new uh, Studio Series one. Number one, I can immediately tell you there is uh, a little bit of a difference in density, I've noticed. Uh, it just it feels denser and nicer, in my opinion. Uh, you can see, like, simplicity-wise. Uh, both of them actually kind of have a similar thing going on with the legs kind of going throughout the body and the arms kind of ending up around the back. But still, this one handled it so much better. This one just did such a better job. Uh, again, I love the paint on the wheels. I think that turned out really, really nice. It has the nice silver going all the way down. Nice silver bumper, a little bit of a grill. I really like this side detailing of like this ventilation. Would it would have kind of not liked that to be picked out in a little bit of color, but still looks nice. One thing I like, though, look at the back. 
And the back actually looks kind of cool. That kind of looks like a little bit of an exhaust thing. It has like this panel back here that kind of fills that in. The back actually looks nice. I, I really appreciate that. They actually put effort into making the back look nice. And there's a lot of transformation going on back there too. Yeah, I really like this car. I think it looks really good. Uh, I really do enjoy the gray plastic right there with the silver. Like that could have just been a red hinge, but they decided to actually make that gray plastic to kind of kind of keep the color going. And it's not too noticeable. It actually blends in pretty well. It's a pretty good color match. Yeah, I like this car. I like it a lot. You can also integrate the gun on this one, and it's not nearly as huge and garish. I kind of like showing the gun integration for, you know, like, War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron guys, because it's actually kind of what they do in the game. You know, they have the guns popping out, and they can shoot in car mode. Yeah. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. <laughs> that looks a lot better. Alrighty. So there's the cars out of the way. This one rolls really good, by the way. This one rolls really, really good. So let's move on to the transformation so we can see uh, just, just how much different they are, shall we say. So transforming our old boy, this is uh, going to fall apart pretty fast, unfortunately. So I'm trying to think where to start. Where do I start? Let's untab the arms. Let's untab those and kind of get those sort of out. Um, and I guess we'll just swing them all the way forward to just kind of get that out of the way. The feet, we will just move down. And we'll just, I guess, accordion all of this. It kind of like folds in on itself. I do kind of like that element of the transformation. There's a lot of accordioning going on. And we flip the feet down, and that's the legs. The legs are just underneath. That's all they are. And then we will take the arms. We will detach them from these side panels without horribly detaching anything. And then we will take the shoulders and untap those. And it's just kind of a lot of very awkward tabs. You have to kind of navigate their odd connections. But once we get it untabbed, it's uh, it's free to move. And then, last but not least, we will take his back. Well, first we need to flip his head out a little bit because his head's kind of stuck. Yeah, this mold wasn't really designed for a sideswipe, so some of the clearances and tolerances don't really work out too well. But then we'll take his back. And it just kind of hinges. It just does this little hinge me do. And that gives you enough clearance for the head to kind of rest in there. And then his shoulders kind of rest into these little slots on the back. And here we go. Here is our Fall of Cybertron sideswipe in his robot mode. I don't know if you noticed yet, but this is a retool of Jazz. <laughs> This is not made for Sideswipe. This was made for Jazz. That's why he has the wheel feet and the arm feet. Those are fake wheels, by the way. Those aren't the real ones. The real ones are hidden right there. Yeah, and proportionally, it's kind of a mess. And uh, like I said, it's better. This is better than Jazz. Jazz is horrible. Jazz is probably the worst figure that has ever been made for Fall of Cybertron or War for Cybertron. It is probably the worst. Uh, and this one, I don't know. I have a soft spot for it. I just liked the colors and everything, but let's just see all these years later how it has improved. I am absolutely blown away with this. Uh, I'm trying to think about where to start, though. First, let's start by untabbing that, and we'll just rotate that out of the way. Then we will untab the side panels from the arms. It's kind of tricky because the arms tab in very, very securely to those side panels, but it's doable. They are removable. Just kind of got a wedge in there and untab them. You can see it's a pretty, pretty big tab that they tabbed into. Once we get them undone, we get them undone. There we go. And then that kind of frees up the legs. But then we'll also take this front section. And that needs to come up. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There we go. So that comes up on that hinge right there. And then look at the legs right here. So in vehicle mode, they are positioned like with these panels covering them. We'll move these panels, and that will free up the thighs to move and expand the legs. And what we end up with is a very, very complex transformation for the legs, especially for modern deluxe, and I just really enjoy it. It's so well done. So we'll take these inner panels, and these purely exist just to fill in the, the shin gap. 
and I love that. Look at all this gap filling. Both of these pieces just exist to fill in the gaps, and that is so nice. We'll fl uh, flip the foot down, and then this side panel will kind of tab into the side. This one tabs in pretty well, but this one on this side, unfortunately, doesn't really... It kind of rests there instead of tabbing. You can see it, it just kind of rests, and it doesn't really tab. It just kind of gushes out. So there's the legs. Those are looking very nice. Kind of flat-footed, but still very nice. And then up here, there is so much going on at the torso. So we'll split the arms, and when we do that, it all just kind of comes down. And look at all these hinges. There's so many hinges, so many things going on. And this is the front of the torso right here. We'll take this section and flip out his head. And just watch how all of this comes together. Watch this. So what's going to happen... The head is going to tab into that little gray piece right there. And then the shoulders, that piece is going to flip down and tab in right there. So basically we're like forming a, a link between the shoulders and the head. And after we do that, we can flip out the hands, rotate the arms. Look at how much nicer the arms look too. And I love this. Check this out. His shoulders, the wheels have a little tabs in them. And we tab these pieces in. And he actually gets like the little shoulder clips that go over the wheels. And I just love that. I love when wheels look like they're kind of encapsulated. I love that so much. And then we'll just take the back kibble, kind of collapse it in a little bit. And last but not least, we'll take the chest. Just tab that in. And here is our new and absolutely improved Studio Series War for Cybertron Sideswipe. In my opinion, the difference is absolutely night and day. This is the first time that this design for Sideswipe has gotten its own dedicated mold, and it shows and it shines. I love this figure. It is so good. So let's compare it to what came before. So, again, this was a retool of Jazz. They pretty much just wanted to Sideswipe in the line because he's pretty prominent in the games. So this is what they gave us. Uh, his head sculpt... I'm not going to lie, I've always kind of liked the head sculpt. It always kind of had like this weird sculptural look to it. I always just thought it looked kind of cool. It looked kind of alien, uh, but definitely not as good as the new one. And it's very buried in the torso. Like, he is totally buried in the chunk of his own body. Like, just look at that. Like, you can't even see his head from the back. You can hardly see it from the sides. It is, like, so buried in there. Uh, his arms are just wibbly and pathetic. Uh, he's got the little jazz, like, pylons on the shoulders, and that really limits the articulation. He has the jazz forearm wheels, and that really limits, like, the accuracy. I do appreciate the silver on the arms, so it adds a little bit of color, but still, it's just, I don't know, not sitting right. The torso, obviously, you know, this is far more accurate to the game. You can see it's supposed to be pretty flat, kind of like, I don't know, Sideswipe. And this is a very jazz hood chest. This is a very jazzy hood chest. Uh, he does have white thighs, which I think looks nice. Again, I do like the difference between the silver and the white. I think that looks good. But the, the legs are just so wibbly. He's got these little, like, ratchets in the knees, and I don't know, man. He's got these stick-thin mushroom swivels, and it actually broke on my jazz. I tried to give, like, rotate his knee, and it broke. So I dare not rotate them. You can see, like, it's not giving right away, so I'm not going to do it. It's, it's there in theory, but I wouldn't move it. Uh, his, like, he's just got so many of these plastic ratchets, and they just don't feel good. And this guy's very, very light feeling. I don't know, I still have a soft spot for it, like I said, but it's just so odd. You can kind of see all the articulation. I've pretty much gone over all of it. It's not bad articulation. It's just such an odd figure. And let's not forget the massive gun he comes with. It's ridiculously huge. It He can't even hold it. It's that big. Like, his arm cannot support the weight. You can see it's just slowly drooping. He cannot even support the weight of this massive gun. The minute I got this figure, I took this gun away. And then as soon as uh, Beast Hunter's Optimus came out, I'm like, oh, this gun would work pretty well. Again, it's not accurate. I would love to see like an APC Toys Beast Hunters Optimus, by the way. I'd love to see that. So, uh, yeah, very big gun. Very big, very ridiculous. Uh, doesn't really have anywhere to store except on the arms. If you want the gun, if you want him to just embrace 
the Megatron lifestyle? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just way too big for his own good. Again, though, I like all the paint on it. So, yeah, that is our original Fall of Cybertron sideswipe. Very odd. And, again, it's not very accurate. It doesn't have the little winglets on the back. It doesn't have the wheels in the right place. It's I do appreciate the remolding they did do, like for the chest and for a lot of the body, but uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. But this one, on the other hand, oh, boy. I love this guy. This is already a contender for one of my favorite deluxes of 2024. I am, I was very pleasantly surprised with this figure. I did not expect it to be as good as it was. I found it at Target, and I just looked at it, and I was like, yeah, the, something about this is just clicking. And as soon as I opened it up and like transformed it and everything, I understood what. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the side swipe I've been waiting for. Absolutely. I feel like this robot mode pretty much only has one problem. There's one problem, and it's not even the end of the world, not for me, but there's just one problem compared to, like, the 20 in this robot mode. Again, I love the arms. I love the proportion. I love the uh, the wheel placement and the little clips right there. I love how they transform. I love the chest. The chest looks very nice and flat. The head sculpt is very good on this one. Like, that is War for Cybertron Sideswipe through and through. I loved his characterization in the games, too. He was he was just such a smartass. I loved him. Uh, he has the winglets on the back, which look very nice. They're a little large, but they get the job done. Like, you can just tell, like, yeah, that Sideswipe's little winglets. Uh, he does have a little bit of a backpack, but it's not it's not bad. It's still pretty pretty good shape to it. it. It's fine, in my opinion. That backpack's fine. I'm not stressing it. The legs I really like. I really enjoy how much they transform. I really enjoy all the little panels. I just enjoy them overall. I think they did a really great job with the legs. I do appreciate the gray thighs because it does kind of break up the color and does kind of invoke the, the white thighs here. He has his little uh, shoulder things too right there. But my only issue is the feet. They are flat. <laughs> and they have no articulation except for this. That's the only articulation the feet have. So you can like use that articulation to kind of get them in a bit of a lunge, but you don't have any tilt, nothing. And I feel like just looking at the plastic there and all the material and kind of how this transforms, I think they could have put an ankle tilt in there. I think they could have. I think they could have figured something out, but not a, they, they have not. Uh, but other than the feet, I think this guy is an absolute winner. Absolutely cannot get enough of it. He does have his gun, and in typical Hasbro War for Cybertron style, you do have to remove the arm to integrate the gun, which is okay. It's game accurate. But I do think they said moving forward, they're going to make sure they can still hold the gun. Oh my gosh, jeez. That took a lot of force to remove. Uh, this one you can fold in the hand, which is a bonus, uh, and it just tabs in to the back. And I think it, you know, pretty... Pretty decent storage right there. You know, it's back there. Doesn't really look too too garish. It's just a nice place to put it while you have the gun on. Because I'll probably display him with this gun because it looks really cool. I love the little magazine sticking out. It, it just looks so cool. I really like it. And it doesn't really impede the articulation. He still has a lot of nice elbow articulation. Speaking of that articulation, he has a ball joint at the head. Gives you a nice little wiggle waggle. Uh, he does have... Looks like ball joints at the shoulders. And the shoulders have a lot of nice range. Because they have like this nice little cutout into the joint. And that just allows it to go out a lot. You know, it just works so well. He has a swivel. He has very nice deep elbow joints. Very nice and deep. He does have a waist swivel. It does start messing with the backpack the more drastically you move it. And it does start messing with the chest. But still, you do get a waist swivel out of there. Ball joints at the hips. It's so funny how Studio Series is okay with ball joints, but like uh, the War for Cybertron trilogy and the Legacy trilogy don't use ball joints. He has a thigh swivel I'm not afraid to use. He has a pretty nice 90 degree at the knee. And again, the only thing I really don't like is that's the only ankle articulation. And it's just, they look like skis. <laughs> it looks like his ski feet. I don't know. They're not the worst, but they definitely could be a lot better. So... There we go. There is my old versus new on Fall of Cybertron Sideswipe versus War for Cybertron Sideswipe. Clearly one of these is a lot better than the other. I don't know if you noticed that yet. 
but one of them is clearly a lot better. Uh, I am absolutely blown away with the new War for Cybertron one. I just think it does such a great job of capturing the figure, capturing the character. And honestly, out of all of these Studio Series figures so far, I feel like this thing could have been released in 2010. It, it just has that vibe. It feels like an old War for Cybertron 2010 figure. It just does. And that, I feel like that's what these figures are trying to accomplish, but are failing in various degrees. I never got the Bumblebee. Never did. Never saw it. Never was interested enough to own that mold twice. I just got Cliff Jumper because he had the more accurate head. I'm, I'm fine without Bumblebee. But this Sideswipe is incredible, and I love it. And I would say it is definitely the best deluxe from this line, for sure. Definitely the best deluxe. But it might be the best figure. I love the Optimus. I do. The Optimus is it's either this one or the Optimus. I don't have the Star Scream yet. But it's either this one or Optimus or the king of the Studio Series War for Cybertron line. And I know it's kind of had an iffy reputation, but this Sideswipe, don't let the reputation of this line draw you away from the Sideswipe, because this is good. And on top of that, he released right alongside his bro in his uh, Bumblebee concept art design. And in my opinion, I think they look really cool together. I don't have that side that Sunstreaker yet, but I'm gonna get it real soon. Amazon had it like in stock, and I was like, oh wow. And it's I was such I was so disappointed though. My target, someone else already must have gotten Sunstreaker. But hey, at least I got Sideswipe. So I can do an old versus new. I can't do an old versus new on Sunstreaker. Alrighty, guys. Let me know what you think. Clearly the old one has its problems. I think I'll hold on to it for now, but I think it might be one of the few instances of me hold it, holding on to a transformer and just keeping it in a drawer. Because this thing just takes the cake in pretty much every other way. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much again for watching. Special shout out to channel members, as always. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Have a great one, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.